Hello and welcome to another tip on Maximo. I'm your host, Chris Winston from Projetech. Today we're going to go through an overview of the Maximo Start Center. In the future, we'll dig into the actual portlets that are used and made up on the Start Center, uh, starting with the actual report list. If you have specific topics that you'd like us to cover, please feel free to send us an email at media at projectech.com. The Start Center itself is made up of portlets, uh, essentially areas on the Start Center screen uh, or frame areas that contain portions of code that bring certain portions of the application or shortcuts onto the Start Center uh, that are convenient. Starting off with the workflow inbox, which can collect all of your uh, workflow requirements uh, for a specific user regards to the application into one central place on the Start Center. Uh, bulletin board for messaging, uh, single click shortcuts either as favorites or as quick insert uh, and quick insert just getting you in, in insert mode. A report list where you will have a list of reports that you can run directly from the Start Center rather than having to navigate to the application. Result sets uh, which are essentially queries that are brought out to the Start Center and uh, key performance indicators, essentially a structure query language statement uh, that resolves to a number. And both result sets and key performance indicators are available to you in graphic form as well as list. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at Maximo. Uh, so this is essentially a Start Center with the individual portlets as I mentioned before. You have quick inserts which uh, when you click on them you go directly into the application and it takes you in an insert mode so you're in the application on the main tab uh, if there's a auto number or the auto number is provided otherwise uh, it just takes you directly in to the starts or excuse me to that application whereas um, the other shortcuts or favorites just take you into the application typically starting on a list tab unless of course you have a default query that runs when you get into it and we'll go back to the Start Center. Uh, beyond that, you have um, individual result sets, uh, bulletin board for messages that you may have, your workflow inbox, uh, again, key performance indicators. And throughout all of this, these are all regulated by security. And with the advent of being able to have more than one security group attached to an individual user, you can also therefore have more than one start center available to that individual user depending on other functions they may perform. So here we have several uh, administrators. Uh, we have one for inventory and you'll notice the look and feel is a little bit different. The administration is broken out sort of half and half. Uh, the left right sides of the screens. Inventory you have sort of the narrow side on the left side and the wider side on the right. Uh, then we have one for maintenance, again narrow and wide, and then one for the operations manager, which looks like it's probably wide and narrow, but it looks like we've gotten rid of our portlets. So whatever you need to refresh from the template that the Start Center is built on, you can simply choose Update Start Center, and it'll bring you back to the baseline uh, that was originally established, of course, giving you an option uh, confirmation box. And once you select yes, then you'll get what was whatever was set up on the original template. Determining whether you deploy this with users having rights to make modifications is really a, a site and administrator's uh, decision. Um, other things you have are the ability to display and control your primary start center as well as uh, which stars actually display that you have access to. And that's all controlled under display settings. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and display the purchasing start center as well. And I'm going to make the maintenance start center my default. Live update, so it just takes you right away, shows the maintenance start center as your first one, and that will be present the next time you log in in this manner until you change it. And of course the purchasing start center uh, that I had chosen to display is now available. Now within these again as I mentioned you have 
some additional flexibilities with managing this sort of real estate here uh, on the start center. You have the capability to maximize and minimize in cases where you just simply do not have the room. And of course you can use the scroll bar to navigate uh, up and down and if needed to uh, left and right depending on how much real estate is taken up uh, on your screen. You again have the graphical versus list views uh, within the result sets as well as the KPIs and within these these are all active hyperlinks so it's not just static information available on the screen for example in this case I've got electrical open and approved work by priority. It looks like we've got uh, 30 work orders that make up priority 9. And if we click on that bar, well, it takes us into the work order tracking application and retrieves those 30 work orders for us to look at. So they are, again, active, uh, functional, operational hyperlinks. So they'll take you to a record, group of records. Uh, depending on what your choice is, either from list view or from the graphic view. KPIs, on the other hand, will uh, take you into the KPI and essentially, assuming of course you have security rights for it, uh, the actual KPI manager area, that will, among other things, display uh, the information for you. If there are uh, data present and historical values are present, these are created uh, by the cron task for key performance indicators and that will run the cron task periodically uh, to perform key performance indicator analysis and create the data points for you and then you'll be able to see them and the trending capability is present within the application you're also able to choose other KPIs that you may wish to compare and we'll refresh and there are a number of other capabilities that you have present uh, within the application. And this is all, again, within the application as delivered. The uh, design, the ability to uh, download the historical values, all of that's there. It's just a matter of actually turning on the cron task uh, to set it up so the data points are, are created for the historical values and, of course, designing the KPI and deploying it. with reports. Uh, generally the main thing to remember about the reports on the uh, Start Center that would run the report list, you want to make sure that you either have the parameters built into the report so that you get just the data that you're looking for. Uh, let's see, Bedford and the primary system looks right. So there we have a report, and again, based on the parameters that we're able to enter at runtime. Or in other cases, reports you may put out here will, uh, in, in general, if you know parameters, then there should be uh, predefined and designed into the actual report so that when you do run it, it gives you the report information that you want as opposed to uh, everything. So in this case, this is a query-based reporting uh, report which has the actual structured query language embedded in the report. And most significantly, it looks like, yeah, open, approved, non-PM work on the Bedford boiler. And looks like it's broken out by the individual work type grouped for you. So those are the things to keep in mind, uh, particularly if you're talking about putting reports onto your Start Center. And we'll get more into the actual design and development of the uh, individual portlets in the next go around with another Maximo tip. Thanks very much and have a good day.